Hey everyone and welcome. Today we'll be running you through gameplay from the world's best top laner, KZ Khan, where you can expect to learn wave control techniques that you've likely never seen applied in this way, which allowed him to dominate lane phase during his weakest moments. What you're about to learn may be difficult to apply right away, but just understanding the way that Khan manipulates the wave in today's guide will truly help your wave control in every aspect. Let's jump into analysis. Khan is on Fiora this time up against Camille. These two have around even damage in general, but Camille will win short trades when she has a passive available, while Fiora can look for quick in and out trades when Camille goes for last hits. For wave clear, it's about even for both champions, while their range is also even, being melee. Everything here seems about even, so on the surface, this seems like a really difficult one to create a game plan for. So we'll have to look deeper into how both champions interact to figure out how each champion will look to win the lane phase. Because Camille will win short trades early when utilizing her passive, she does have the potential to bully Fiora if the lane is neutral. However, if Fiora is able to set up a freeze near her tower, it would rule out the possibility of Camille bullying her with her passive, and Camille would have to tank tower shots if she ever uses her E onto the Fiora. With that in mind, Khan's missions on the Fiora are going to be Mission 1. Let the wave push. By letting Camille push, Fiora can unlock the possibility of receiving a gank while laning safely until level 6. Mission 2. Hold the freeze. Fiora will want to buy as much time as possible for these two goals, so holding the freeze after letting it push is the clear choice here. Mission 3. Rinse and repeat and just wait for ganks and level 6. Fiora will want to wait for either jungle help or to get level 6 safely, where she would then be able to win the 1v1, since her ultimate deals much more consistent damage than Camille's. It's just stronger for the 1v1. Now, while this sounds straightforward, it's the execution from Khan that we're about to get into which is most exciting. So, let's get into it. Starting off, we see Khan leashing for Nocturne. This is fine because he isn't looking to actively shove the wave as his goal is to let the wave push towards his tower and set up a freeze. As Khan gets into lane, you'll notice that Camille has actually got a head start on pushing. This immediately gets us wondering, why would Camille play into Fiora's game plan by pushing in top Korean challenger? So Camille pushing right away isn't bad for her, but it's not optimal because it relies on Khan making mistakes. A push lead means a possible level advantage or a quick shove to the tower, but with our wave clay evenly matched, these are two things that Khan can deal with if he plays well. Whereas if Camille didn't push at all, she could have kept the wave neutral for the beginning and then looked to get harassed with her passive, keeping the ball in her court. We see Khan path towards the minions and at this point there's a super low health melee on both sides. Most players in this situation would be tunneled and going for their last hit here because they feel like CS difference is the top priority and would be more than willing to sacrifice health to score a CS when they're at 100%. However, because Camille got the immediate push, she will actually get her last hit before Fiora reaches this melee, leaving her with a free opportunity to punish without losing anything. She would get the CS and then auto W auto Fiora for free. If they both would have hit the CS at the same time though, then Fiora should go for it. So Khan gives up this CS, and then a few seconds later the same situation arises, so he gives up another. Only picking up 1 out of 3 so far, but he actually gets the win here, because the wave is pushing towards him for mission 1. So he's down in CS, but he's already starting to win the lane. Fiora pushes up a little and starts thinning out these casters, by spreading damage evenly between them. This may have you asking two questions. Why isn't he leaving the casters at full life? And why is Camille letting him push up? So he's thinning out these casters collective health so that Camille doesn't push too quickly. We'll explain more on this soon. Secondly, Camille is letting him push up because she's scared of a level 2 gank. She knows that Fiora leashed topside and Nocturne could be here now. Khan misses a vital and ends up getting caught out by Camille's level 2 lead. This obviously wasn't great from Khan, but the bigger picture for mission 1 and 2 are still in play, so he's happy with how this is going. This was also an expensive trade from Camille's side because she hit most of the wave with her W. While her wave was already pushing, she doesn't have the wave clear to shove it to the tower, 
So this W accelerated the inevitable freeze that's coming up from Khan from the start, unless Camille is able to get really aggressive and capitalize on this. Alright, so let's dig into the impressive nuances behind Khan's upcoming freeze that he's really about to get to work on. Typically when trying to apply a basic freeze, it involves letting your opponent push, thin out the wave so that they're 2 or 3 minions ahead, then usually holding the wave in some way, either by trading or tanking it, to buy time for your next wave to come up and hold the freeze. However, in a losing matchup, which in this case it is until level 6, Khan will want to hold the freeze for mission 2 and he's going to go about this in a very specific way. He will aim to thin out the melee minions on the opposing side to allow the enemy wave to gain a larger caster advantage by about 1 or 2. When done correctly, this will allow Fiora's melees to connect with the enemy casters more quickly on the upcoming waves, staggering Camille's push to the turret to effectively apply a freeze but without much risk. So here's a clear example of this happening. Khan has been thinning out the melees and finishing them off as his new wave is about to arrive. If he didn't do this, the two waves would connect right around here. But with the melees cleared out and the caster advantage on the opposing side, Khan's melees are about to connect to the casters with the waves colliding in this spot instead. This maintains Camille's push for mission 1, but it slows it down to leave the wave on Fiora's side for as long as possible without taking risks. We'll see a more advantageous looking example of this in just a moment, but we can already see Fiora is setting herself up safely during her weakest moments of the lane. Khan continues to thin out the melees alongside this caster that's pushed up and will die anyway. He avoids trading while doing this, and the wave pushes up to his optimal freezing zone where he will want to work on mission 2, but he's been preparing to hold the freeze this whole time by thinning out the wave. So at this point, we see a couple of low health blue melees still alive. Ideally, these would be dead. Camille did a good job of getting aggressive, and while this is not optimal for Khan, it's still a success, because these two red melees are delaying the bulk of the wave getting into tower range. Now, with this huge wave that Camille has built,